Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video we're going to be covering the Tsunade arc and this arc was just amazing. Going into this I thought it might be a bit slower than the other arcs since we just left off on the Hokage's death and the village being destroyed and it did seem like at the beginning of this arc it was just going to be like an adventure type thing with some like training and that but oh my god did it finish in one of the best ways ever. I also went into Naruto with the understanding of Naruto having bad written female characters because that's just like what I hear all the time about Naruto. But I did actually really like Tsunade and I think she's a really well written character and I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about Tsunade and being a well written character. But anyway, let's just get into the blind review. Okay, so the arc starts with us going to Orochimaru's base and seeing that he isn't doing well since he lost his arms. He also seems like he's got this illness by the way he's just sweating so much, but that also could be because he's in a lot of pain. We also hear about Itachi Uchiha who is Sasuke's older brother and that Orochimaru failed to take his body because Itachi was just too strong for him which is crazy because Orochimaru is on par with the Hokage so that would mean that Itachi is even stronger than the Hokage and that Itachi is supposed to be the person that Sasuke wants to defeat so it's going to be a long story for Sasuke if he wants to try and defeat Itachi. We also get a little hint at the end that he was part of an organization that we find out a little bit more about later and then we go back to the village where Jirai is being asked to be the Hokage which I thought was a surprise because he's a massive perv and that he's just really childish. He doesn't sound like someone who you could like give the whole village to to look after but Jirai does actually turn it down and he says that he'll find Tsunade and that she can become the Hokage because Tsunade was part of the legendary three ninjas the same as Orochimaru and Jiraiya but she just like left the village one day so Jiraiya has to search for her and bring her back and then as we saw at the end of the last arc Itachi and some random fish guy have infiltrated the village even though you would think that the village would just be on this really high lockdown with every entrance being blocked since the Hokage just died they still managed to sneak into the village and then go to this like tea house to have some tea together as Itachi and the fish guy are having tea, Kakashi is outside of the tea house waiting for Sasuke. Asuma and Kurenai are both coming towards the tea house too, so they chose the wrong place to go. But as soon as Sasuke arrives, Itachi and the fish man disappear. Asuma, Kurenai and Kakashi all knew that the people in the tea house weren't from the village, and Asuma and Kurenai followed them. So then Itachi and Kisame start fighting Asuma and Kurenai. And it really isn't much of a fight. Kurenai tries to put Itachi into a genjutsu, but Itachi reverses it and puts her in the same genjutsu that he was in. And as he's about to kill her, she bites her lip to escape. And Kisame is fighting Asuma, where Asuma isn't doing well against him, which is crazy because it looks like Itachi and Kisame weren't even trying during the fight. Especially Itachi, where he's just barely moving. But then the boy Kakashi comes and saves both of them by copying Kisame's jutsu and being able to use it at the same force as Kisame who has been using it probably for his whole entire life and Kakashi was able to just use it straight away. And then we get to see a bit of Kakashi versus Itachi. Now when Kakashi steps in to fight Itachi he does a far better job than Asuma and Kurenai at fighting Itachi but Itachi still outclasses someone like Kakashi. Itachi can weave hand signs so fast that Kakashi can't even keep up with his Sharingan. He can also create exploding shadow clones. I'm not sure how he does it, but it's still a very strong move. And then Kakashi says that he's not even showing the extent of his power and that Itachi rose to be a Black Ops captain at the age of 13, which sounds insane since that's like the military of the Leaf and then he's just like one of the captains of that. And then Itachi shows us a really, really badass move called Tsukuyomi, the Nightmare Realm which has a really badass name. It looks like it's where Itachi puts Kakashi in a genjutsu of Itachi just stabbing him over and over again for 72 hours. But in reality, it only happens for a second. Itachi can't use this really cool jutsu all the time because Kasame says that he's overused his eyes. But we do find out the reason why Itachi is in the Leaf Village, and that is for Naruto, who equals the fourth Hokage's legacy. So it could mean that he's after the Ninetales since the fourth Hokage sacrificed himself to defeat the Ninetales and to put it in Naruto. We then see that Kakashi and Jiraiya both talked about an organisation that is full of S-ranked ninja who are looking for things such as the Ninetale Fox and that Orochimaru was once part of this organisation. The organisation is called the Akatsuki and it will probably be one of the main antagonists for the foreseeable future but Jiraiya knew that they were after Naruto so I'm guessing that's why he's taking Naruto with him because with the Hokage being dead no one's strong enough to be able to protect Naruto from this group except from Jiraiya and it will also be hard to track Naruto when they're on the move. But Kakashi has been tasked with teaching Sasuke how to use his Sharingan properly. Then we return to the fight where Kakashi is about to be killed. Guy then shows up and kicks Kisame away from Kakashi. And as Guy is about to fight Itachi, 
since he has a way of fighting him with only looking at the opponent's feet, Itachi and Kisame flee as they don't want to start an all-out war. Which I thought was weird since Itachi and Kisame could have killed all of them very easily and Guy was the only one who was able to put up a fight against Itachi at that point. And I'd even say that Itachi was still stronger than Guy because Guy is only a little tiny bit stronger than Kakashi. So I don't think that he would have done much against Itachi who showed Kakashi levels. With Itachi and Kasame gone, we go back to Jiraiya and Naruto where Naruto doesn't want to go with Jiraiya since he wants to train. But Jiraiya tells Naruto he will teach him a technique that's cooler than the Shidori. And so off Naruto and Jiraiya go to find Tsunade. You can just tell that Naruto and Jiraiya are going to have an amazing relationship together, like a father-son one, especially since they're going to be travelling together for a long time. We then get to see some good character development from Sasuke. He's starting to get jealous of Naruto's strength, since he was useless in the fight against Gaara, but Naruto was able to defeat him, and that Naruto has this power inside of him that even scares Sasuke. And the biggest thing that makes him start to feel inferior to Naruto is that he hears that Itachi came back to the leaf, but he's looking for Naruto, not Sasuke. Hearing that would have probably destroyed Sasuke mentally, as he wants to get revenge for his clan, but he sees himself inferior to Itachi at the moment, but Itachi is taking notice of Naruto. We then go to Itachi and Kisame talking about how Kisame is no match for Jiraiya and if Itachi fought him then the fight would end in both Jiraiya and Itachi dying. Naruto and Jiraiya go to an inn but Jiraiya leaves Naruto on his own in the hotel room to get better at controlling his chakra and once Sasuke finds out Itachi is after Naruto he leaves to find Naruto to tell him he's in danger and just as Sasuke knocks on the room he thinks it's going to be Jiraiya and Naruto we see Naruto opening his door to a knock to reveal that it was Itachi knocking at on Naruto's door and that Sasuke went to the wrong inn but I just love the way that Itachi just casually knocks on the door and asks Naruto to come with him it's just like he's not even trying to capture him and this is when we get to see a little of what happened with Sasuke's clan and we get to see how badass Itachi is. Itachi graduated the Ninja Academy at the age of 7. He was using the Sharingan at 8 and he became a Chunin at 10. To put it into perspective, Sasuke who was supposed to be this prodigy was 12 when he graduated from the academy so Itachi was 5 years younger than him. We also get to see that Sasuke had this deep love for Itachi and that he really looked up to him as a great ninja saying that he wanted Itachi to train him over his father and he got upset when Itachi was busy. And then the night of the massacre happened. Sasuke who was 10 at the time was coming home from shuriken training when he saw that there was a fight that happened in his town and as he's run into his house he's probably walking past all of these dead bodies that are people that he spoke to every day and when he got to his house he went straight to his parents room he knocks on the door to see if anyone's in and he hears a voice telling him to go away so Sasuke opens the door to his brother standing over his parents dead bodies I just can't think of how bad this would have been seeing that at his age and it looks like Itachi even put Sasuke in a genjutsu to show how he killed his parents and then Sasuke finally arrives at the place Itachi is. Somehow Naruto didn't know that Itachi was Sasuke's brother until he was told it, even though when he first saw him, he thought it was Sasuke. We see that Itachi didn't kill Sasuke that night because Sasuke was too weak to kill and that there was no point in doing so. And the reason why he killed his clan was so he could measure his capacity, which is a really weird thing to do because there are other ways of doing that. But Sasuke powers up a Shidori, which is so powerful as peeling the skin off his hand. And as he runs at Itachi, he stops him with one hand without moving his body. It just shows how weak Sasuke is compared to Itachi and the massive wall he has to overcome. And it also slaps Sasuke back into reality as he probably thought he would be able to fight Itachi at this point. But it really was no contest as his strongest move did nothing to him. Naruto gathers some of the Nine Tails Chakra to summon Gamma Bunta, but Kisame swings his sword past Naruto and he loses all of the chakra he just built up because Kisame's sword can steal the chakra from people, which I thought was really cool. And just as Kisame swings down to chop Naruto's arms off, Jiraiya appears in front of Naruto and summons a frog to block the attack. I love the dynamic between Naruto and Jiraiya. It really is just like a father-son relationship, the way that they argue when Naruto calls him pervy sage in front of Itachi and Kisame. Jiraiya is about to fight Itachi and Kisame when Sasuke gets back up and tries to fight Itachi again. Itachi kicks him in the stomach and then put him in a special genjutsu to relive the night of where his clan died for the next 24 hours. Kisame mentions how he shouldn't use this jutsu so many times in one day. It makes you think why would Itachi use it on Sasuke since he doesn't care about him and it seems to be damaging Itachi. 
I think there will be something deeper between the two of them, but we'll just have to wait and see. Jirai uses a jutsu where he summons a toad's stomach around the area to trap Kisame and Itachi in, claiming that no one has been able to escape from it. As Itachi leaves Sasuke, he tells him that he's still weak and that he doesn't have enough hatred. They manage to break out the toad's stomach by Itachi using another one of his Sharingan abilities, where he summons black flames which burns a hole through the toad's stomach. And while they are retreating, Kisame asks why they are running because Itachi has enough power to defeat Jiraiya, which is crazy because we've just seen that Orochimaru can do and Jiraiya would be on the same level as him. And hearing that Itachi could defeat him makes the mission of killing him seem possible. Jiraiya manages to seal some of the black flames that Itachi created because Jiraiya had never seen them before. And after he does does that guy comes through and kicks Jiraiya thinking he was the bad guy as he wasn't able to look at him in case he was Itachi and he didn't bring his mirror because he was in a hurry. And then we get to see a little bit of the gambler who will be the next Hokage, the slug princess Tsunade. It seems that the Sanin all have different animal summonings, Orochimaru being snakes, Jiraiya being toads and Tsunade being slugs, which seems the worst out of the three of them. As we get to know a little bit about the Tsunade character, we find out about her gambling addiction and that she skips town all the time because she's in so much debt. She doesn't sound like she'll be a very good Hokage who will be in charge of the whole village's funds. But Naruto and Jiraiya head off again to find Tsunade and to teach Naruto a cool new jutsu. I think Naruto and Jiraiya have one of the best relationships that I've seen in anime. The way Naruto has such an innocent way of thinking and then Jiraiya just crushes it in a day. The way he took Naruto's wallet from him so Naruto wouldn't spend all of his money because it's one of the three shinobi prohibitions. But he made it all up so he could spend all of Naruto's money on women and alcohol so he broke all of the rules he was teaching Naruto. This was just after Naruto spent the last bit of pocket money he had on snacks for him and Jiraiya to share. Jiraiya shows us the new jutsu he's going to teach Naruto. It looks like you put chakra in your hand, shape it into a ball while spinning it, which pushes the opponent back when you hit, it, hit them with it. It seemed very powerful when Jiraiya said that he was holding back with it. So for Naruto to learn this jutsu, he has to use water balloons to put his chakra into it and then rotate the chakra he's putting into the water balloon so it moves the water and explodes the balloon. Naruto is really struggling to burst the water balloon so Jiraiya helps him out by telling him which way his chakra is supposed to spin, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You can tell this by looking at the shinobi's hair and seeing which way it grows in. With this bit of information, Naruto says he'll master the jutsu in three days. This is when Jiraiya tells him that the jutsu is the fourth Hokage's legacy and that it took him three years to perfect the jutsu, so that just shuts him down on wanting to do it in three days. But this does give Naruto the motivation to learn this jutsu as the fourth Hokage was someone he looked up to and learning something like this would make him one step closer to becoming the Hokage. After three days of not being able to break the water balloon, the cat at the hotel they're staying at bats around the one of the water balloons and manages to pop it. This is when Naruto realised that you don't need to spin it the water in one direction but lots of different directions all at the same time. And he manages to pop it by using his left hand to hold the balloon and feed chakra into it and he uses his right hand to move the chakra which is in the balloon. The next stage of the training is burst a rubber ball. This is so he can add the power to the jutsu because the rubber ball will be quite thick and a lot harder to break than the water balloon. After three weeks of not being able to pop the rubber ball basically on his own, as Jiraiya is in town collecting intelligence on Tsunade, it makes Naruto feel lonely, especially when he went into town to get lunch for him and Jiraiya and he sees a father and son sharing a double stick ice lolly together. It makes him quite envious as he's never had that kind of connection with someone before, but it does seem like he's starting to get that connection with Jiraiya. After a little more time passes, Naruto is finally able to make a little tiny hole in the balloon, which Jiraiya counts as him completing the task. As a congratulations, Jiraiya brings him the ice lolly he saw the father and son share together so they can both share it. It just goes to show how Jiraiya is always looking over Naruto, since he probably saw him being envious of them, and he could also tell that this training was quite hard for Naruto, as he wasn't allowed any help from Jiraiya because he has to learn it on his own. Naruto has to be one of the dumbest characters I've seen when it comes to training. He has to have Jiraiya tell him everything, otherwise he just won't understand what's happening. While Naruto's training and Jiraiya is finding information on Tsunade, we go over to Orochimaru and see that he's going through a lot of pain still since losing his arms to Haruzen. But we find out that he's also trying to find Tsunade so that she can heal his arms. I don't know how she could put the soul that was taken from them back in. It will also take away all of what Haruzen did to Orochimaru and just take away that sacrifice. And Orochimaru is such a messed up guy. He has a grin on his face as he's talking about loads of people losing their lives in the war. I would love to see a backstory of why he is who he is. 
So, Orochimaru finds Tsunade before Jiraiya and Naruto do, and he makes her a deal that if she heals his arms, he will bring back to life using his reanimation jutsu, her younger brother, and her boyfriend. But if he does get his arms healed, then he's probably going to destroy the leaf village again. Now, this deal would seem like it would be easy to say no to, since it's the village she lived in, but it doesn't seem like she has any ties to it now, and it doesn't seem like she's even been back to the village in a long time. She also doesn't know that they want her to become the Hokage yet, so I can see her saying yes to this deal to get the two people she loves most back. But Jiraiya and Naruto are very close to finding her as they're in the same village as her now, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. This is when we find out something crazy. The medical ninja Tsunade has a fear of blood and she trembles when she sees it. And this is the person who's supposed to help Kakashi, Sasuke and Lee. Orochimaru gives her a time limit of a week to give him an answer. And if she does heal his hands, then she needs to bring him two sacrifices for the reanimation jutsu. Jirai just misses the confrontation and gets there when they've both left. But as Naruto and Jirai go into a pub to get more intel, Tsunade sat in the pub getting drunk. So Jiraiya and Naruto go and sit next to her and this is when Jiraiya lays down the question for her to become the Hokage and Tsunade refuses it and disrespects all of the previous Hokage. Obviously Naruto wasn't best pleased to hear that because he idolises all of the Hokage and it's his dream to become it. So when she disrespects them Naruto jumps onto the table to try and punch her before Jiraiya stops him. And so 50 year old Tsunade takes little 12 year old Naruto out to have a fight. And as anyone could tell, Tsunade just completely destroys Naruto with the one finger. She takes his kunai, uses it to take his headband off and flicks his forehead which sends him flying back. So Naruto tries to use his Rasengan on her and for a moment the Jutsu actually scared her and made her destroy the floor so Naruto couldn't get close to her with it. And then Tsunade asks him why he admires the Hokage so much and then she sees her little brother in Naruto because he had the same dream as him. So Tsunade makes a deal with him that if he masters the Rasengan in a week, then he'll get her necklace, which is worth a mint because it's the first Hokage's necklace. But what she's really doing is testing Naruto to whether she can put her faith in the next generation of ninja and become the Hokage. And if he fails, then she'll take Orochimaru's offer. After a few days of Naruto trying to perfect the Rasengan, it's the night before Tsunade has to go and see Orochimaru and Tsunade drugs Jiraiya. I'm not sure if it's because she was going to use Naruto and Jiraiya as sacrifices and she wouldn't be able to if Jiraiya was awake because he's too strong for her or it's just because she wants to take out Orochimaru alone so he doesn't get suspicious of her. I don't know why but I feel like Kabuto is going to kill Orochimaru later on and take his place. He seems like he's scheming something and it looks like Orochimaru has a lot of trust in him that Kabuto could use to take him out. But the next day Jiraiya wakes up and almost kills Shizune. It turns out that what Tsunade gave to Jiraiya made him unable to control his chakra properly. So basically Kishimoto's made it even between all three of them going into the fight. And Kabuto is just such a strong ninja. He's able to trade blows with one of the strongest characters in the series so far. He's able to use his medical ninjutsu as a weapon to cut Tsunade's muscles without leaving any mark on the outside of her body. And when she messed up his nervous system by changing the way different parts of the body move, so like when he wants his left hand to move, his right leg will move or left leg will move or something like that. He was able to figure out which part of the body she changed would move which part so that he was able just to like fight easily again in a few seconds. All right, I can't even play games on inverted settings because my brain just gets too confused. I'm telling you that Kabuto is going to be a bigger part in the future of the story. Now, before I get into the big fight, before I started reading Naruto, I saw that a lot of people say that Kishimoto can't write good female characters. But Tsunade is a very well-written female character, which I hold as high as one of the best female characters that I've seen. All right, I haven't read too many stories, all right, but she's one of the best ones that I've seen. I love the bit of backstory we got from her and the way that she's still affected by the backstory so many years later and that she manages to overcome the fear of blood during the fights was just great. And like everyone wants, she also has so many badass moments during this fight. But let's start from the beginning of the fight because it was just an amazing fight even though Jiraiya had to get nerfed. We start with Kabuto slicing his wrist while in a 1v1 with Tsunade so that she goes into shock since she's got a phobia of the blood. Which then means that Naruto has to start fighting Kabuto and there is just a massive difference in the skill during this fight. Naruto keeps on getting knocked down over and over again but the thing that Naruto is strong at is the determination to get back up when he gets knocked down. 
And there's this one panel which just represents that best is when Kabuto knocks Naruto down and he thinks he's out of the fight. He then goes to punch Tsunade and Naruto puts his head in the way to protect her. And now we get into the last part of the Naruto versus Kabuto fight, where Naruto still is just getting completely outclassed, showing why Kabuto is in the same class as Kakashi. And Naruto would have lost the fight if he didn't catch Kabuto's kunai so he could use his master Rasengan on him at point blank range. But Kabuto has this broken ability where he can focus his chakra into one part of his body to reproduce the cells so he can heal from any fatal wound. But it also uses a lot of chakra and luckily he didn't have enough chakra to completely heal from Naruto's hit. So they both go down and the fight ends in a draw. Orochimaru sees Naruto on the floor and tries to kill him while he's down because he sees him as someone who can mess up his plans in the future. So he uses his sword that he pulls out of his throat to stab Naruto. But Tsunade jumps in the way to protect Naruto and the sword goes straight through her chest. And this is where we see her healing ability, which she created called Mitoic Regeneration, where she can heal her internal organs. And this is when she gets over her fear of blood to protect Naruto. And now we go into the big fight of this arc. Tsunade and Jiraiya versus Orochimaru. Which is quite unfair since Orochimaru can't use his arms, but Tsunade is completely fine. And Jiraiya is just like a little bit drunk and can't control his chakra properly. But Orochimaru does put up a great fight and his snake summoning is really strong as it was able to take on both Jiraiya's summoning and Tsunade's for a decent amount of time. But Tsunade has so much raw strength that she can pick up Gamma Bunta's massive sword really easily and she stabs it straight through Manda's mouth. And then she absolutely destroys Orochimaru's face by punching him so hard that it makes the skin start peeling away. And so this is when Orochimaru knows that he's being outmatched now and he just decides to dip from the scene with Kabuto. After the fight, Tsunade transforms into an old granny since she used too much chakra during the fight. So they rest in the town so Tsunade can get her chakra back and turn young again and so Naruto can heal from the fight. So the next day when everyone's healed, they head back to the leaf village and Tsunade becomes the new Hokage. Now I wonder how long it will be until Tsunade sacrifices her life for the village. And this will be it for the video. We covered the search for Tsunade arc, which was another great arc in the story. I don't think there's actually been a bad arc in Naruto so far. And Tsunade has a really good introduction to the story and she seems like a really well-written character. And I'm excited to see more about her in the next arcs. But the next arc will be the first part of the Sasuke retrieval arc. I'll be reading from chapter 172 to 218. But I'm really excited to see what this next arc is about because it sounds quite interesting just by the title of it. But anyway, that is going to be it from the video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day or great night wherever you are and peace.